Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another video. Um, today's video is about NixOS. See, if you saw my live stream where I was looking at NixOS on camera, you probably, um, if you saw the end, you'll know that me and NixOS kind of left on a bad note. Um, I didn't like it. Well, here's the thing. I really wanted to, to like it, so you know what I did? I installed NixOS on my hardware. And this isn't just like this laptop. I installed it. Um, I installed it on every single main machine I have on hand right now. So the only machine that doesn't have NixOS is my desktop. And that's because I can't access it. Now why did I why did I do this? Why did I go from hating NixOS to all of a sudden using it on every machine I can get my hands on and being a fanatic and telling people to use NixOS and like even writing a tutorial and in including instructions for NixOS in that tutorial? Why did I do that? Well, see, I left up I left off on a bad note with NixOS, uh, partly because I didn't really know what I was getting into, and I didn't know what to do, really. I just knew, like, add some packages to the config file, and there's some command to rebuild the config, but I don't know what it is. So overall, I didn't really do research. It was a live, live stream, that's, y you know. Um, so I installed NixOS on my machine because I said frick it and I installed it on one of my laptops that I don't use as much and I started using it on that laptop and I was like holy cow I in a virtual machine I was not able to appreciate how awesome NixOS is I tried it on that little laptop and it was amazing I I noticed right away that Maybe in a virtual machine, it doesn't have much impact because you're just playing around with it. But on everyday hardware, it's actually super cool. So for starters, it's reproducible. So if I go to my GitLab, which I'm starting to move everything to GitLab since I've actually reached the 100 repository limit on Codeberg, GitLab also has nicer features. And, and Coburg keeps uh, going down for some reason. So you can see my NixOS configuration has 67 commits. And I actually set this up in such a way where those of you who have tried using NixOS before, you'll know that in Etsy slash NixOS, there should be a configuration.nix. Well, I actually set up my config in such a way where this file does not exist. Instead, all my configurations are in .nixos-config in my home directory. And this is really cool because it means I don't have to use sudo to edit my config. I can also easily save it with git without any like symlink nonsense or whatever, which is super cool. And the reason I'm able to have like this um uh directory independent structure of my config is because of flakes. Uh, I want to give a shout out to um, Inatix. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing their name correctly, but uh, they helped me a lot during this process. And actually, if I go to my merge requests for my NixOS configurations, uh, and I go to merged, they actually opened a merge request to add um, like a flake thing. They added a flake.lock file and a flake.nix file. And I'll show you what those are. So the flake.lock file, it's nothing you need to worry about. If you delete it, it just gets regenerated. But um, if I if I ls my Etsy NixOS folder, this is just like emulating it so people reading my config know what's going on. So this flake.nix file is what you want to look at. And this is super cool. So if I um, 
if I show you what's in here, basically, you know, I've got a common, so then, like, if I wanted to search for hardware, I can do exclamation HDW, and that's a, an easy way to search for hardware. So what I've got in here is the description, uh, the inputs, Nixo, uh, nixpackages.url, um, so this puts me on the unstable channel of NixOS, so it's a lot more like Arch instead of something like Ubuntu or Fedora. Uh, I've got Home Manager, which I'm still trying to wrap my head exactly what that is. As far as I know, it is used to set things like the GTK theme, which yeah, my even my GTK theme is reproducible. And then I've got some Hyperlin stuff, um, and... Uh, so now I've got some of my global variables. So I've got my full name and username. And then I've got my hardware. So small guy is the smaller laptop I have. And this basically has all like the boilerplate. And then I call this configuration file on it machine small guy config dot nix. And in my hardware configuration for Pongo, which is this laptop. I have the same thing except for Pongo. And what this is, is I can have machine specific configs. And for those of you who want to read my config files, this global config.nix, this is just configuration.nix. I, I renamed it to something that makes more sense. And the reason I was able to rename it was because if I, um, if I show you in my machines Etsy, Nix machines. If I go to Pongo, for example, and I uh, show you, it's the machine specific configuration files that actually call back to global config. And this is where, like, I can set, like, my host name and GPU drivers and stuff. And this is super cool because I only have to do this once, and that's done forever. Like, once I set these config values, I can just set them, forget them, rebuild my system, save them to Git, and I can pull them on all my devices. So for example, if I install Discord on one device, I can install it on all devices with one simple command, and that is to rebuild my system. It's the same with things like environment variables and stuff like that. It's super cool. Like I even have sysrq enabled, which uh, is cool because it means if my computer fr freezes up I can enter commands with my keyboard directly to the kernel to safely reboot my system and stuff. I'll I'll link a tutorial to sysrq that I wrote down in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a super cool lifesaver. Um, and I have it enabled here and it and it this is really nice because I'll never forget to enable sysrq ever again and then it, like I get in a sticky situation I can't safely reboot my computer no it's just already set um, my gtk.nix file is where I have my gtk theme and my obs.nix file the reason I have that is um, because of small guy my little laptop uh, small guy has a Celeron <laughs> so Small guy compiles stuff super slowly, and the obs.nix file, in order to get obs on Nix OS, from what I've seen, you have to install a file, a Qt webkit file, and that thing takes so long to compile on the Celeron, and actually, it's marked as an insecure package in the Nix packages thing. And for good reason. I tried compiling OBS on my little laptop, uh, and like it isn't much of a big deal considering OBS barely works on that lop laptop anyways. I tried compiling it on that laptop, and it got to the point where it kept crashing unless, like, my laptop kept crashing. That's why I actually enabled sysrq is because my laptop kept crashing when trying to compile OBS or not compile but just retrieve and then compile this webkit package um, my laptop kept crashing and that was super annoying and 
Like, even though I'd enter in, like, TTY3 and compile it without any, uh, compositor, like, no Wayland compositor or whatever, it still would crash eventually. So I just said, hey, I'm just gonna create a separate file called obs.nix. Any machines that want OBS on them can include that file. And that's what I did, and it works really well. Um, one thing that NixOS... One thing you kind of want to do on NixOS, though, is there's a ton of boilerplate. So if I go to global config, uh, I can show you. So, okay, here's actually where I'm setting sysrq, because the other sysrq.nix file is an entire systemd process I created that I later learned I don't need. Uh, so, I prefer the grub bootloader, so what I did is I actually disabled systemd boot and enabled grub, which there's actually an option for that in NixOS, which is super cool. Uh, this is where I enable networking, my time zone, my locale, um, extra locale setting, settings. Uh, this is my user, so I'm in these groups. Uh, this is how I enable unfree packages. And so, yeah, one thing I actually heard yesterday was that uh, GNU Geeks, apparently GNU Geeks is another distribution that has a config file like NixOS and follows much of the same idea. Um, someone said that GNU Geeks is basically NixOS for those who don't want to use proprietary software. But I don't get why they say that considering there's this line you can just say allow unfree to false and then you don't have unfree packages. So I don't I don't understand their logic. But NixOS actually misses a lot of core utilities out of the box. So like I had to install LLD, GCC, uh, Glibc. This is mainly for compiling GTK applications built in Rust. Uh, Clang, so Clang, LLVM packages .bin tools, and then I have some of my other stuff. So like Wget, you all know what Wget is. And then I've got uh, ProCPS. The reason I installed ProCPS is actually because the default uptime command on NixOS is GNU uptime. And that's different because like you're probably familiar with uptime-p to get like a pretty output of your uptime. Like here if I go to my power menu you'll see 70 minutes. That's using uptime-p piped into sed to remove up space. And the reason uh, I installed ProCPS is the dash P flag in GNU uptime does not exist. So I noticed that this thing was empty when I tried using uh, GNU uptime. So I added this thing, ProCPS. Uh, kill all, you probably all know what kill all is. And then surprisingly, zip and unzip, and I guess this isn't as surprising as the other ones, was not included on NixOS. I'm pretty sure on Arch Linux one of these is included. And then I also installed Blues and Blues Tools for my Bluetooth. Lib notifies, so I have notification support. So like if I send myself a notification, uh, this was just an example notification I made, uh, you'll see that the, the notification works. And then I have Brightness CTL, this is for my backlight. Uh, so like here in my way bar, you'll probably see I can scroll this and it works. You'll obviously not see it in the recording because um, this is a hardware thing, not a video thing. And then I have light. This allows me to see my brightness. So right now my brightness is 24.71 and obviously way bar rounds that up. Um, then I have S XDG. XDG desktop portal. This is so like I can open up links and it will open my browser and stuff. XDG dash utils. I don't really know what this adds, but I was told to add it. Pipewire. This is so I can have sound and um, Wayland OBS support. Um, and actually, yeah, I did not install Pulse Audio. And What's super cool is Pipewire actually has a tool called WPCTL that can replace PACTL. The syntax is a tiny bit different, 
but overall it's almost identical. And actually, WPCTL has better syntax. And it took me a little bit of time to properly integrate WPCTL into this widget I made that has um, like sliders where I can change my brightness. The brightness was fine, because that has nothing to do with sound, but this audio and video, um, this audio, uh, audio sliders, they had to be tweaked for WPCTL. And then, um, wire plumber, that's just something that goes with pipe wire, PKG config, I added this because for some reason, uh, Rust applications would not compile without PKG config, so that's definitely something I added to core, to core packages. And then I have my standard packages. This is stuff like st uh, network manager. This is stuff like you don't really need, but uh, like you don't, y you could plug a computer into Ethernet. And I do actually have an Ethernet port on this System76 laptop. Um, but yeah, network manager, network manager applet. This is this little applet in Waybar in my system tray. Um, I also have Git. FZF. FZF is cool because um, it's a fuzzy finder. And then I have Vim. I actually don't really know why this is here considering I'm a Helix user. I have TLDR. This is so I can, uh, for example, if I want to see information on the uh, Clido app I made, I actually have a TLDR page I submitted and it shows you how to use my to-do app thing. And um, I have socks. This is so I can play sounds with the play command. I have yad. This is so I can make like bash GUIs. I have flat pack and I have xterm because... Actually, why do I have xterm? Uh, let me just go ahead and remove that on camera. And this is actually good, I'm removing it because I'm going to show you an alias I have later. There. Okay. Um, so now I'll just HX18. So I had X term. Um, and then I have my GTK libraries. This is, I added these so I could compile GTK applications made in Rust. I have my QT things. Uh, this is missing that uh, dependency. I forgot what it's called, but it's a dependency that was uh, crashing my little laptop and is required by OBS. Uh, I have my packages, so Helix, Brave, Thunar, for some reason, there's a really weird bug on NixOS where if you, uh, cause I prefer Nemo, sort of, I mean, I don't really care, but Nemo has like a nicer interface in my opinion. Um, Nemo, I would open like two Nemo windows and then close one of them and all my Nemo windows would close. I don't know why that happened, but it's just something that bugged me and I actually have the cinnamon desktop environment on here that I installed later and for some reason when logged into cinnamon Nemo acts just fine so I'm guessing maybe it's a Wayland thing an ex Wayland thing I have kitty this is just an alternative uh, terminal emulator I have in here and for some reason it doesn't read my bash RC which is odd um, I've bat. This is my cat alias. So if I cat bash rc, you'll see. I did actually have to create dot bash rc in um, uh, after installing Nick. So maybe maybe I'm doing it wrong because uh, I am realizing that's not really reproducible. I'll find a workaround. Um, bat x. Uh, this is my ls. Um, alias. It's really nice. And then I have Tmux. You guys know what Tmux is probably. It's my um, thing where I can tile my terminal basically. Pavu control. 
Even though this is a pulse audio volume control application, it actually works for Pipewire just fine. I have Blue Man, this is my Bluetooth manager, Trash CLI. I actually added this out of curiosity, but I have no idea what this is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, why do tool? I added this because I think it's Wayland X do tool. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. Um, why, why do tool? Yeah, it looks like it's just. Wait. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just Wayland X do tool. Um, Kava. You guys probably know what Kava is. It's how I visualize music in a terminal in a really cool way. A lot of racers use it. So, like, if I open Kava and I play some audio, um, I'm gonna. Yeah, no. I don't. Okay. It, it, basically, these go like up and down, and a lot of racers use it. It's a cool app. Um, I have Neofetch, you guys know that, Starship, Lawcat, you know, just all these. I also have Transmission, Slurp, Gparted, my proprietary applications, and yeah, I'm a Spotify user. Get over it. <laughs> um, uh, I have Window Managers, Xorg stuff, Sadface, Awesome, and then Cinnamon, Nitrogen, Pycom, Dunst, Flameshot, Programming tools, Rust, Cargo, Rust C, Rust Analyzer Go, and then I actually have the R programming language too because I have a math teacher that is teaching me R. Um, I have my um, display managers, and right now I'm actually using GDM because it's really nice. Hyperland, this is stuff from my Hyperland Rice. So you have all of this. And one thing for those of you trying to get Steam working, on um, on NixOS, you actually have to install Steam through your system packages, and then you have to do programs.steam.enable equals true. Don't ask me why, it's just like that. And then I have some um, um, enable some stuff, and this is how I enable Hyperland, my printing services, my X server, my uh, I don't okay. Um, I I don't know what this is really. And I also enable Blue Man, Dbus, Flatpak, OpenGL, Bluetooth, and then this is actually something kind of important if you plan on using external storage devices. Is you want to add services. Devmon. Enable equals true. Services. Udisk two. Enable equals true services.gvfs.enable equals true. And okay. Um yeah, so I long story short, I used NixOS because it's actually really nice when you start uh learning about it and you start actually using it. And it's also super nice because it's reproducible reproducible and I've noticed stuff actually works better on NixOS once you set it up better than it ever did on Arch. So like for example Helix I was writing Rust code on um I was writing Rust code in Helix when I was using Arch and all it did was um highlight the Rust syntax but it didn't tell me hints or errors. And then I started using Helix with Rust code on NixOS and it's like a full blown IDE almost. It's crazy. So I highly recommend checking out NixOS. I do want to mention that it is not for the faint of heart. It is absolutely not for the faint of heart. There are there is a lot of setup and research involved. I had to ask an AI search engine a few times because the documentation is still not that good. But if I were to name some places where um people can help you I would recommend their uh, discord server well the unofficial discord server nick slash nix os unofficial you can actually find this in discovered discoverable servers um, and then I've got some people that I have in my friends list that 
have helped me a ton. So like here's Ina X. Um, we talked back and forth getting Nix OS to work and stuff. Uh, really helped a lot. Thank you, Ina X, if you see this video. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So before I go. I'm going to ask you guys, I have a Discord server, actually. I said, hey, I'll suck it up, and I have a Discord server. So if you guys use Discord, consider checking out my server. I've actually been pretty active on Discord, so uh, I have a server. I'll leave the link down in this description, uh, and I also have a website. So, So I have my Discord server. I have my Odyssey channel, YouTube channel, and I also have my website with all my links. So I've got my GitLab repos, my Codeberg repos, my YouTube channel, my Odyssey channel, my Discord server, my Revolt server, and I've also added a tutorial section. This uh, shows you how to enable SysRQ. So I've been working pretty hard on this. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, uh, please stay safe. I will see you all next time. Oh, and I also have a Mastodon account at, um, uh, dang it, Mastodon.social. I have at Oglo, um, Oglo the Nerd at Mastodon.social if you guys want to follow me there. So, without further ado, check out my website, join my Discord server, follow me on Mastodon. Odyssey, YouTube, um, and I will see you all next time. Ciao.